Hello and welcome to Garrock Farms. Today the hoof trimmer was here, so we're kind of cleaning up the alleyway that was set up to kind of route the cattle around the building here and uh, keep them moving through the area where we had the hoof trimmer set up. Just put the heifers from the calf barn back into their pen. Looks like my daddy's been hard at work cleaning pens here this afternoon, so we're gonna help him uh, finish things up here and uh, get the yard back in order.
we just got done hoof trimming earlier today. We didn't film any of that. It's kind of one of them things where there's enough excitement here already. But what we do is we, hit, we set the hoofer up in this pen, the hoof chute, and it's, a, it's not the one that lays on the side. It's the one that keeps the animal standing and supports them. These guys do a great job. I mean, now the cattle hadn't been grazing for several months and, and we've been seeing a, a couple small issues in the barn. So it's best to stay ahead of these things. Usually get better results, you do them sooner. But we've done all the dairy cows, all the dry stuff and a couple heifers that look like they could use it. Otherwise everybody's looking good. And so what we did here and usually I like to use lime, but it's so icy, so we I use sand. This is some stuff that in the lower shed where we keep the straw in the in that hay down there. It just gets like a powder. The thing is with barn lime is okay, but it dissolves, it takes so much of it, and it costs something too. But this mm. stuff here. So I scooped up some of this and scattered it in a lot here yesterday and then a little around the yard, and then they were adding to it as they were going. So the cattle don't fall down because when you're trying to do stuff like that anybody that knows cattle you you need good traction but then i lined up these machines here i had a feed mixer and a couple tractors and i needed one gate so i could so they wouldn't go here on the ice they would end up going down in here we're going to clean this maternity pen these two calves were born in the last two days and the one is a jersey put into a holstein and they're both heifer calves this other one is, is pure whole scene. And these mama cows are kind of wound up, but that's good. They need to get out of here a little bit and take a walk while we clean their pen. There's, it's only gonna take us a minute and you can go back by your calves. So they'll probably stay with these calves till tomorrow and then I gotta go up to the dairy barn. Good. little calf came out of this huge cow. <laughs> I think she just lifted her tail and pushed a little bit and flopped right out. And then that white one, which is twice as big as that one, came out of this small cow. <laughs> Shows you how genetics can work. But I don't know, that's the Jersey Cross and I'm thinking I maybe, I had to look at the records again, but I might have had trouble getting this larger cow bred. Sometimes you use Jersey, they're more fertile. And then of course they have a lot easier time calving too, so there's always, everything's healthy. So if you're gonna get a Jersey calf, you want a heifer calf because the bull calf ain't worth a whole lot. Simply because it's small. I give these guys a little fresh bedding. Seems like we're going through an awful lot of bedding here. And the forecast doesn't sound like anything real cold. It seems to me like we're kind of just hovering around 32 and just slightly under at night. And then a little rain, drizzle, a little bit of snow again. Alrighty, I got them uh, two small pens here on this side of the calf barn bedded up and taken care of through some uh, fresh bedding over the top of their existing bedding pack. And uh, yeah, so this afternoon basically we're cleaning up from hoof trimming, getting that alleyway, all that equipment put away that we're kind of using as a as a barrier to help guide the cattle around the buildings. We're getting all that put away, unloaded that load of ground feed, and uh, kind of cleaning up here in the calf barn. 
while dad's hauling that load of manure, I'm gonna bed up the maternity pen here. All that action must have got that little Jersey Holstein cross calf all oh, hungry. While we were unloading that grain, I crawled up on the bracing and I knocked down some more hay and man, did I knock down some hay. So I threw out about half the bales down into the manger of the barn here. So they cleaned up most of their grain that we just fed. So I think I'm gonna spread it out now and then they should be good on hay for the rest of the night. back with the manure. Did you, um, when you're showing off your, your cattle lane there, did you talk about how it went? Everything going well, it, it actually went pretty good. We, every time you do something like that, what do we have, like, yeah, like 54, I don't remember exactly, but there was one cow that they ran into their chute, you know, catcher, and <laughs> she ran right through. <laughs> it's just like funny. And once that happens, you're not getting her back. I mean, it's not worth it because she's it's already so riled up. And... Yeah, so he, it's just like, okay, I guess they don't get to charge me for that one. But it went pretty good. I mean, well, if they're spunky enough to jump through it, their hooves are probably. Okay. Well, that's just 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 the way we looked at it. I mean, so we've had years where uh, there was maybe one or two that were giving us such a rough time. I mean, they were they had their hooves on top of gates that were this tall, and we're just like, no, nah, we back off and leave them go. Yeah, instead they of, just instead they, of hurting hurting yeah, somebody or the cow, something gets hurt or whatever. So, and and you're right, if they can do that, you know, yeah, they're probably just fine. they're probably going to be fine. It's just, uh, but these guys, I, and he's been doing it, I think for 20, 24, 25 years. He told me now. You tell them your technique in the barn before you let them out there about turning the music up and. Well, so it's it's interesting with cattle. It, now, the older cows know. These guys drove in the yard and, and we're finishing milking and I usually got my end of things all set up out here. So they just know where to set up and the pen is open, the cattle are tied back and the cows are in the barn, we're milking. So then all of a sudden they're just, they're already reaching up a little higher, looking out the window, ears are up. And you turn the radio up just a little bit more and you push up the feed. You just try to, try to disguise it. But I think the smell and the rattle. Yeah, of the, yeah, but they hear that trailer come in. And they they just, go. they just know. I think it's more that that burnt hoof smell because they grind them, you know, a little bit. I mean, it's not. It, it's like trimming your fingernails. Really, is what it is. But it's just that smell from that after that's done. It's it's a little bit of a of a different smell and those older cows. And you could tell. So like when Mason and I were sorting off the dry cows from the spring and heifers. Usually the springers, they all look pretty good. There was only one that had a little something we thought we'd check, but all the heifers wanted to go through the gate and run towards it, but the cows were going the other way because they just knew. Because yeah. last year they were, they were hoofed too. Yeah, cows are smart. And when um, back to the hoof trimming comment you made, how it's a lot like trimming their fingernails. For people that don't know, uh, hoof trimmers, the tools they're using, they got these special like knives that kind of you can. Well, they got them. the ones with the big handles, like a uh, big shear. And and actually, it was interesting. Some some guys do it by hand yet, but when you do like several hundred a day, you're gonna. They used to use those clippers, they uh, like an angle grinder, 
and there's yeah. a special a, it's, a special pad that's on there it's yeah. not your typical metal and you have to know what you're doing you have to know just how far down to go just like trimming your nails you go too far you're gonna rip a little skin and get a little you know and then what that does is the animal for the next year you do it is she's already on to you you know it's even like they claim that with shoeing horses too yeah you know they don't forget that so if you're if you're you happen to uh, pinch a nerve in her somehow there she's but for the you know half a day of uncomfort comes a year of of comfort so a cow's hoof when you graze or when they're walking through the grasses or just through the barnyard through the dirt through anything walking when they drag that hoof the tip of their hoof as they're walking and dragging it through that's what wears them you know, and we got a lot of sand in the hills around the barnyard here and all that, too. That helps, the grit. You know, so if they're just on a flat surface, maybe you got rubber mats in your stalls all the time, they rarely get outside, there's nothing to naturally wear those down. Yeah, it's a lot like a house dog versus a farm dog that's or a dog exactly that's going right. outside all the time. So even ourselves, because we're working all the time, my nails never get long. I may have to trim one in a blue moon, but they keep kind of breaking and, and almost like they're you're almost sanding them off naturally. And that's exactly right. So what happens is we take these animals out of their natural environment, which is confinement in the winter with the snow and ice. And then we have to kind of make up for that. And if she don't feel good, like she, if she don't feel like she can, you know, like if her feet are a little sore or uneven, she's gonna lie down more. She won't eat as often. You know, she just feels better. She feels like moving around. She feels like getting aggressive. So, and I've noticed too, uh, it's a lot easier to sell a lame cow that's walking in the pasture to to a buyer than it is to sell her in the barnyard because she won't show it mm -hmm. or she will she will sh you know you'll see her walk and you say well she's fine out on that dirt and grass and then you get her in a barnyard and she starts favoring that hoof and I compare it to like walking across the gravel barefooted versus like walking grass. through the grass or something. So if there's something not right there, she's gonna. Yeah, and a lot like us, a grooming day, you're gonna feel a lot better after yeah. you. So take care of I mean, yourself. we just, I think it's just good to do because it's all preventative. And anytime you gotta use some, use some antibiotic or something, which is rarely, rarely necessary, I mean, it costs. And you, you can't use the milk for a while and all that stuff. And if you can prevent all that, yeah, that, that money we didn't have to spend on treatments later, um, just like vaccines, they're re really, really cheap compared to what, you know. It's another happen. easy improvement. It's another easy so, improvement. Yeah, I went really good. I mean, these guys, they flown through it. The, the, it's usually one of them things where the, you know, quicker the better. So there's a two man crew and you got one guy that does the front right and the other guy does the left back. And then they use a belt across her abdomen area so she doesn't slip down. She, they got her pretty snug in there. And then they, when they're both done with that, they switch over. And, and, uh, and rarely one would need a wrap or something from a wart or something like that. So the less time that they're in that shoot, the better. You know, you get them quick and out they go. Just like giving us a shot to just give it already instead of give you all the warning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what happened out here today. And I'm happy to hear it went good. Um, People are going to ask, how often are you going to do that? Once, twice a year? I've, I've went, I mean, when we started here, we never done it. But I think, I don't know if, if the genetics are changing some or the feeds we're using, uh, the hooves, maybe they're, you know, maybe they were harder years ago. They didn't, or, or soft. I, I, you know, I don't know. They wear differently. But we do it about once a year. Now, I've skipped a year here and there. Or like if I do it in the spring, I always figure I'd do it in the early, early spring, and then they're good all the way into like late winter again, you know, because over summer we never have hoof problems. He'll sometimes call me up in the fall and say, you got anything going on? We're at your neighbor's. We could maybe come in there. And, and I'm like, there's nothing. Everything looks great. There's no reason to. Uh... But then you get, you know, once you get into December, you start seeing little issues again. I mean, it's yeah, just confined. Just because they're back on the concrete and not. It's, oh, yeah, it, it's, it's all environment. When it comes to hooves, it's all about environment. There's just like you said, like with your dog and all that stuff. Like we never, Mariska here, we never trimmed her. Yeah, and <laughs> same with River. She's in the house the majority of the time, but we make it a point to bring her to the farm or take her outside. And I think maybe once in her lifetime, we've trimmed her nails. But. Yeah, but the thing is the way she sips around here. I mean, she wears them down. She's got it so full of energy. No, it's a, it was a big day. And I never look forward to anything you gotta, 
you know, anytime you got to kind of force an animal into a situation, they don't understand. You only wish they could yeah. you know, and realize you're trying to help them, you know, not, not hurt them. Not stress them out more, but it's for, uh, it's for the better. So, um, what you got going on now? What do you want to work on? Well, we could start this project here. And this is some boards off the barn. It's, a, it's where, where we took some hay out. And what I did is I, I tore three boards off. There never was a door there. Instead of throwing it down the chute and carrying it out, that's where we were getting that old hay off the fur in, into the barn there. Yeah, or we could do it uh, tomorrow all at one crack. That's our next project. So yeah, there's always projects. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> so this is simple stuff. All right, so we just uh, got finished eating some dinner and we're back out here to feed now. And uh, so just so you guys have a reference, these are those wraps we were talking about. And really all that is is that there's a little bit of medication they put between the toe on that wart. And that's to hold it on there. And actually, in about two to three days tops, I take them off. And you got one with a, a block and that's... Uh, well, and what that is, is um, there must be some sort of abscess, so what they do is they they put a piece of wood, maybe about a half inch thick, they, they shape it to the size of the hook and they actually glue it on there. And then they got like a heat gun or something that helps dry that glue. Just to prevent her from so Then she does not put on weight on that one side. That's kind of like, uh, yeah. Like a crutch or... Uh, yeah, it's like the only... So the one... Like and what happens is that wears off. I mean, or eventually a fall off, but it might take a month or two. I've seen them. I mean, they'll eventually just wear it on because it's just wood. But that just takes the weight off that one side. So she's, instead of her limping, she walks on it. So, but you don't want to see, we don't, maybe only have one of those every time we do it, if we do. So if you guys didn't know what uh, we meant by wrapping or if anybody ever refers to a block when it comes to cow's hooves, now you know. Yeah. So uh, we're going to get to feeding. So we just finished up feeding, everything went good there. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a little something from today's video when it came to hoof trimming. I think it's super beneficial for any kind of cattle herd. It's uh, just one of them things where if you, you take care of it early, you're gonna be rewarded down the road. Super grateful they were able to come here and do that and everything went good. Thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave plenty of comments and uh, check out our other videos.